Finally, we get to talk about the most famous, best known continuous probability distribution of all time. It's one that you probably know about, certainly have heard about, may even have some thoughts about. It is the normal probability distribution, also known as a bell curve or a Gaussian curve, or what we are going to call the normal curve. Why is the normal curve so popular? Why is it the curve that we are going to use the very most in this class? It is because a normal distribution models pretty much everything. Height, weight, IQ, shoe size, resilience, neuroticism, rainfall, GRE scores, crop yields, blood pressure, pretty much everything. Most human measures can be modeled with a normal curve. And, as we'll discover later, when we plot the means, the expected values, of all of those other distributions that we've learned about, whether it's exponential or Poisson or uniform, the distribution of those sample means will form a normal curve. The normal curve is foundational to pretty much everything that we're going to do in statistics. And that's why it is so important that we learn the qualities of a normal curve. The normal curve will be represented by a smooth, continuous line. This is an idealized curve. The halves are symmetrical. The left half is a mirror image of the right half. The measure of skewness in a normal curve is zero. The measure of kurtosis is actually four, but that means the excess kurtosis is zero. The excess kurtosis being kurtosis in excess of four. We are going to use a normal distribution with interval and ratio or scale level data. Continuous data rather than counts. You'll notice that there is no y-axis drawn in. It's understood to be there. The y-axis is still representing frequency even though it hasn't been labeled. Higher just means more when we look at the curve. The most frequently occurring scores are in the middle, with less frequently occurring scores being above and below the mean, and the smallest frequencies out in the ends, in what we call the tails of the curve. Scores that are way out in the tails are called outliers, because they lie far out from the mean. If the most frequently occurring score is in the middle, and the mean is the most frequently occurring score, we're already getting a hint of some other characteristic of this normal curve that can be very important to us. The highest point, the middle of the curve, is the mean, or mu. The mean is the same as the middle score, which is the same as the most frequently occurring score. Ergo, in a normal distribution, the mean equals the median, equals the mode. We can use this as we examine distributions of any kind. Measure the mean, the median, and the mode. See if they are equal. If they are, most likely you have a normal distribution. But they don't have to be precisely equal. They could be approximately equal. If they're close, that tells us that we have normality within our data set. In fact, there is a hypothesis test that we could use to see whether or not the mean median mode, or specifically the median, and the mean deviate sufficiently that we would say that it was a non-normal distribution. The mean of a normal curve could be any value. It could be a positive 10. It could be a negative 5. Or the mean of the normal curve could simply be 0. And so, we could talk about normal curves not as a single, but a family of curves based upon the standard deviation of the curve. The standard deviation determines the width of the curve. Standard deviation will always be a positive value because it is the square root of the variance. A larger standard deviation, which is represented as sigma, indicates a wider curve. A smaller sigma value, a smaller standard deviation, indicates a narrower curve, regardless of the mean of that distribution. 
Because we are considering the family of normal distributions, we could convert one normal distribution into another normal distribution. In fact, the normal distribution that we want to use, if we possibly can, is one that is called Z. And a Z distribution is a standard normal distribution. And we will know it because a standard normal distribution always has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. When we convert any of the family of normal distributions into a standard normal curve, we have standardized that measure. Regardless of its initial mean and standard deviation, it has been transformed into a normal curve with a mu, or mean, of zero and a sigma, or standard deviation, of one. We will use the letter Z to indicate a standard normal random variable. Does that letter Z sound familiar? I hope so. It's the same Z that we discussed with Z scores, or a Z distribution. The formula, X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, is the same formula that we've used previously, where Z indicates how many standard deviations a score is from the mean. How far does a raw score deviate from the mean in standard deviation units? Do that with every score in your distribution, and you have standardized those scores into a standard normal curve.